Is it complete? Oh yeah. Oh, it's even got the wrapper. Oh yeah. A lot of these are even unpunched. There's the pile so far. Well, if you step one over here to my trunk, I got a hell of a deal for it. Okay. But first, I think it's important to talk about the future of the channel. Bloggy flips. Ooh. Look at that. And actually, I'm just gonna gift this to you. <gasps> that is so awesome, man. Thank you very much. Since that uh, techno drum wasn't complete like I thought it was, it was like. Oh, that was close enough, man. But yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and gift that to you. Well, that's very cool. And I know you said you didn't like NASCAR stuff, but I thought I found something that might bridge the gap for you. That is really cool. <laughs> and then I know there's a little 1983. That is awesome. Yeah, oh, those are all gifts. So. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. I actually brought you a gift too. Give me just a second. Okay. Found this at a yard sale last weekend. Made me think of you. It's not. It's not Vintage Champion, but it's a Larry Bird autograph. I know he's one of your favorite players. That's cool. So, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. It's got the PSA and everything on it. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Thank you. All you. We got a we got a Larry Bird basketball. It's gonna look autograph. It's gonna look great right next to awesome. it. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. It's gonna go great with my jersey. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I don't know what's happening. Oh no, no. Gifts very often, so I appreciate it. Cool, Thank man. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you like it. We ready to get started here? We get, it's all right down the line. You can go just pick it up okay. and start getting it. Cool. I'm, I'm getting the grills from inside the house I want to bring out for you. Awesome, man. Sounds good. Mom's already trying to uh, take my Larry Bird. <laughs> she loves Larry. She loves him when he coaches the Pacers. He made it cool to be from Indiana. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah. There's a lot of good books in yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not even gonna look through them right now. This is one in the pile. Yeah. Where should I make my pile? Just, uh, just over here? Yeah, everybody did last okay. time. And the rest of them there's It's kind of rid of them like that. Like I bought them for. <laughs> That's the old one. I think it's a, a dragon. Savage Dragon. She's appeared in She-Hulk. That's weird. That's, that's like a crossover. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. I do recall those. Yeah. That's Amigo too. Is it? Yep. And I've got the, the the figure should be somewhere in here. At least one of them. I don't have to cut that. Oh wow. It's like an instant Dukes of Hazard collection. Oh yeah. And doubles? Yeah, doubles. How about that? See, I would eat off that one. That yeah. one's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I kind of regretted not getting some of those last time. Jedi Arena. That's kind of neat. Yeah. What's oh, this thing? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I think those are old folders for school. It yep. is. Oh, wow. How cool is that? Those they were, were awesome. <laughs> 1983. That's a cool idea for right. Wow. That is cool. Yeah. I like those. Are they for sale? Sure. Okay. All right. There's the pile so far. Gotcha. So I know one of them had pink gloves. And these are always my guilty pleasure too. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Cut. Yeah. That's a great shape too. Pokemon, Pokemon marbles. marbles. Those are neat. Well, if you step one over here to my trunk, I got a, I got a hell of a deal for you. Okay. Here we go. That's what I like to see. Lots of hip hop. And there's and underneath all that hip hop, there's more rock. Like there's some really fine choice uh, striper albums in there. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, those are the ones. Yeah. There's, oh yeah, there's, there's the striper. Really like condition. yeah, them things were perfect. And it, nice. it, one of them's even the white vinyl. It, it's like a sixty-five dollar album. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. Look at that. Well, do you want me to pick through these or just leave them there and say that they're was, in the pile? I was trying to move the whole lot if you was looking at cool. the whole lot. There's right, there's roughly right at like a hundred albums there, and I was thinking like four dollars a piece if you was probably, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see what everything comes out to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. Okay. There's the heavy hitters. 
Yeah. Some of it, yeah. I'm trying to figure out if I'm supposed to put this down. Uh, we already sent you pictures of this. We already... Yeah, that's cool. It's interesting. I know that. Yeah. I don't know if you want to open this up or not. It's like. Is it complete? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's even got the wrapper. Oh, yeah. The, the only problem is it's part of the styrofoam top broke yeah. off. But other than that, they're in their plastic baggies. Been used but rewrapped or never used? It's been used but rewrapped. Yeah. It, was, it was pulled out and tested. I played with it for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And we got the Play It Loud Game Boy. I don't know if you had any interest in that. Sure. The big green brick. Cool. The Pikachu pocket. Mm-hmm. What the color? It's color. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you have any interest in the Super Scope. That's complete in there, too. Yep. What else was there? Oh yeah, the. Here we go. Oh man. Now everything in there is not going to be for sale. Okay, I'll let you tell me what's for sale. Well, you can. Most of the stuff on top is for sale. Most okay. of it. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing the anvil, of course. Right on. But yeah, that's for sale. These. I don't know if you know what those are. I do not know that's what these Michael are. That's Michael Jackson branded sunglasses, right there. <laughs> that is awesome. Yep. I come across a bundle of those. I, Mojo Casher ended up with a, a couple pairs. I've got a pair in the house, and that's the last pair I've got left for sale. That's neat. Then here's the Go Box. Go Box. I sent you a picture of. A lot of these are even unpunched. That's cool. These cards are decent too. Yeah. What about that guy? Yeah, he's for sale. Oh, he even has his dog tag. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That is nice. Okay. The white shirt referee i'm gonna keep him i don't know if you know the story about those there's two there's one with the blue shirt one with the white shirt white shirts rare i know it's all about the variants with yeah. the ljns there's the there's the walking oh, dead. that's cool yeah did you actually meet him like at a con or something yeah that one's not so so high it's cool. yeah. all the stuff's still sealed there's a vintage amigo dr spock that is neat I'm on the fence about him. I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of him or not yet. Okay. The trench coat Don. I'm keeping the alien. The Mario figures aren't for sale. And here's Casey. DJ in the dirt. That could be for sale if you're interested in that. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I get rid of both these wacky, the wacky actions. If okay. you're interested in those. Yep, I like those. All right. That's the Casey Jones. Let's see here. You can get rid. Of, I can get rid of one of that one if you're interested in those. There's another Karai serpent if you're interested in her. Okay. I'm keeping this one. If you don't know if you read about GI Joe, you could have your own GI Joe made back in the day. Oh, that's My parents neat. set one off and had me a custom GI Joe made. I've still got the action figure in the house. That is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it in this tub. Okay. Cool. I definitely like all this stuff here. Is that everything? I think that's most everything. Okay. So we got that pile, this pile, that pile, and the records. Right. That's where we are. Okay. Well, let's start over here. We'll okay. go from pile to pile to pile and we'll figure out price. Okay. There's a lot of key issues in there, like the monster magazines and stuff. Uh, I was thinking like three bucks a book is what I was thinking. Okay. How many you have in there? You know, and, and I know there's 235 books in there, but I would just call it just call it 200. Okay. Figures here. You think 200 on the holes? Is that too much? That sounds fine. Does that sound good mm -hmm. for all that? 200 for all that. I was thinking, uh, did you look up the GoBots? Do you have any idea what they're worth? Um, in perfect shape, I, I think they range from like 1 to 130 or One, something yeah, like that's that. What I, was think so. I was thinking like 50 bucks a piece on those. Okay. If you were interested in those, uh, that'd be 250 for all five. Okay. I heard just, and then uh, I call it 350 for all of it if you wanted it because I know okay. he's worth like 200 himself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with 350 on this. Okay. For sure. So, then what we figure out on that up back here? You said one? six and two. Okay, that's eight. And then 350. Or it, do I say 300? What did I say? 350. 350? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's 1150. So, with the records, you'd be looking at 1550. Yeah. And then this stuff right here. I was going to ask one and a quarter on that. That's about half. Okay. I, I don't know what to ask for this. It's all over the place. Yeah. Um, I'd say maybe like 75 for this, this, and that. $25 a piece for okay. those. Sure. And then 
what do you think? You think sixty bucks on that? Probably, yeah. Yeah. If that's fair for you. Okay, so fifteen fifty, sixteen seventy five, seventeen fifty. So you're at eighteen ten? Yeah. Eighteen ten. I think it's good, man. I mean, if you're good with that, I'm good with that. I think so. I, I think the part that scares me the most is the comics. Yeah. I've, I've went through and done my due diligence. Yeah. There's a lot, I trust you. a lot of good books in there. A lot of $10 and $20 hitters yeah. for your booth. At, you know. But other than that, like everything else is awesome. Okay, uh, so. so yeah, let's just do it. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay, as long as cool. you're good. It's like I'm good. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 7, 58, 59, 50, 1,000. Okay. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83 for 18, mm -hmm. 10. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. It's awesome. Thank you. All right, so we made it back to the garage, drove up north to see my buddy Go Go Snow for the second time, picked up a, a bunch of the stuff that I didn't grab last time. Also, this time he brought out some of his personal collection, got to buy a big chunk of that too, so pretty amazing. If you haven't yet checked out Go Go Snow's channel, I will link it in the description below. Make sure you stop by, show them some love, see what they're up to. Very, very cool people. I'm going to give you a closer look at some of this cool stuff, but first, I think it's important to talk about the future of the channel. Just to kind of tell you about what's next, what we've been working on, what we're excited about. So for the past year or so, my main sales outlet has been my little vendor booth. I haven't taken you on a tour for a while, but I've kind of turned it into just a cool little vintage collectible spot. It continues to do well. It's a lot of fun. It's exceeding my expectations for sure. But there is a certain caliber of collectible that I've just kind of been stockpiling. A lot of it you see me pick up on the channel. There's quite a bit of it that never made it to video. So you're probably thinking the next logical step of this little evolution would be like a standalone brick and mortar store. But as of now, that is not the case. I'm not gonna take it off the table completely. There are certain things involved with opening up a standalone shop that I'm just not personally ready to commit to just yet. However, there is a long-term goal that I don't think I've ever spoken about on the channel, but I've been prepping for it for a long time. Things finally feel right and it's time to set those wheels in motion. And that goal is to become a dealer at major conventions in the Midwest and ideally throughout the entire country. I would love to get to the point of doing a half dozen or so like major comic and toy and collectible conventions throughout the country every year. After an 18 year on and off love affair with eBay and e-commerce in general, it's just really not a passion anymore. And it really hasn't been for quite some time. If you're new to the channel or a casual viewer, that might surprise you a little bit. If you've been around for a while, you've probably heard me say things like, my ultimate goal would probably be to have a reselling business that is sustainable, completely independent of like third-party selling apps. A business where I don't have to rely on eBay or Amazon or anything like that. That is a tall order, that's tough. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but that's what I'll continue working towards. The only real connection that this channel has had to eBay for a long time is the fact that I'll use eBay comps to try to show a, a potential snapshot for value. But really all that is, is, is a very small picture on one platform over a very short amount of time. It's just an easily digestible way to see what something could possibly be worth to the right person. And then also there's the matter of the silly theme song that plays when the video is over that I wrote years ago when I was basically just throwing things at the wall, seeing what would stick. So to get things rolling, I decided decided to apply to, to the biggest collectibles convention in my personal state, Indiana, and that is the Indiana Comic Con. If you live near either coast, that might not seem like a big deal, but it brings out thousands and thousands and thousands of people every year over the course of three days. And that is where I decided I wanted to start. I went through the application process to become a vendor, and that was a learning experience all on its own. Once you apply, the list becomes public, and you can kind of see the status of everyone's application. So over the course of several days, I watched application after application be denied or waitlisted or approved. And I started to get nervous. But finally, after like three to four days, I did get the email saying that I was approved to sell at the 2023 Indiana Comic Con. I quickly paid for and secured the spot. So now I have until May 5th to scour the state, to scour the Midwest, finding only the best stuff to put in front of thousands and thousands of collectors that save up all year to attend this event. And the goal is to just stuff it full of all of my favorite stuff, vintage and rare Star Wars and Motu and horror and turtles and garbage pail kids and Pokemon, all the stuff that you know I love on the highest level possible. So all this makes me super excited for the future of the channel. Up until 
until now, the videos have just kind of been little snapshots of a good day here and there. But now I can share with you not only the hunt, but the way I'm going to package things and merchandise things and price things, even the not so exciting details like what grid wall I'm going to purchase, how I'm going to set up shelves, maybe even the Comic Con exclusive that I'm currently working on. There's just a lot of stuff that goes into this change and I'm excited to share the journey and I'm even more excited to share the end product when we finally get there and you get to see how it all goes down. And then I'm also going to take you along to the booth and show you how my expansion there is going, show you the type of stuff I take there, how I decide what goes in the booth and what I'm going to save for Comic Con. Everything is just going to feel a lot more personal and a lot more complete. Now, hopefully that wasn't too long, but I just kind of wanted to clear the palette and set the stage for what's to come. So real quick, I want to show you some of the stuff I picked up from GoGo Snow. There was a lot of stuff for the booth and some good stuff for Comic-Con, so kind of one of those perfect buys. I do want to mention real quick that this was kind of five separate deals. I kind of look at it more as two separate deals. We have the comics and the records that were $1,000, which in my opinion was the most aggressive part of the entire deal. So all that stuff, I did get it all sorted and graded and sleeved and priced, and I've already dropped all that off. That actually turned out to be a pretty pretty straight wholesale deal with decent margins. So he's kind of wanted that money to, to be working and turning basically sooner than later. But that more aggressive deal definitely paved the way for what I think is an incredible deal on the more exciting stuff. So real quick, let's take a look at everything. So over here, I have a couple tables set up in the open space just to kind of spread some of this stuff out. This is all the stuff that I'll be taking straight to the booth. Just some really solid little collectibles like this big stack of uh, TMNT. I think these are like the 2015 release. Got the SNES Super Scope in box. That thing is actually mint. These Demolition Man figures have actually gotten pretty collectible. Personally, I've always been a big fan of Sly Stallone. I even love his new show, Tulsa King, if you've not checked that out yet. We have the complete Mego General Lee, which is probably like a $50 to $80 piece. We have the TV trays, two of them are Dukes of Hazard. We have the ET. We've got a bunch of X Men type figures, the vintage ET figures. I always think those are cool, even though they're not worth a whole lot. The Mario Amiibos. Got some Robocop. We've got a vintage Tommy Green Ranger. Rest in peace. That was really sad. We've got the Mego Action Jackson stuff with the Scramble Cycle. Pretty rare piece on the Scramble Cycle. It's missing the steering wheel though. The Atari Jedi Arena game. No manual, but it does have a nice box. Some more action figures. Thought these were really cool. These are the uh, Michael Jackson sunglasses from the 80s. More Power Rangers, more X-Men stuff. Just some really solid stuff here. Very excited to get this stuff all priced up and let people look through it before Christmas. And then what we have over here is more the cream of the crop, if you will. This is a lot of this stuff out of his personal collection. So I was super excited to not only be able to look through this stuff, but to also have the opportunity to buy quite a bit of it. I definitely have a lot of this stuff earmarked for Comic-Con. Picked up all these vintage GoBots on card. Some of the cards aren't great. Some of them are actually really good. I put them all in these little plastic protectors. These things are pretty great if you deal in a lot of the uh, 3.75 scale action figures and such like G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Most of these, I would think, with really nice cards could sell for between like $1 and $200. For the most part, I would say that these would land in the $60 to $100 range. I think this Scorp is probably the nicest because it's unpunched and it has a, a really nice card on it. That one may get priced a little higher. We have the vintage Wacky Action Turtles on card. We have Michelangelo and we have Donatello. These can usually pull 50 to 100 bucks a piece. The vintage TMNT gift set doesn't come up very often, but they are very cool. I've only seen one one other time, and I think that was at Kokomo Toys, so I was excited to snag this one. We've got the vintage carded Mego Dr. Spock, probably a $100 to $150 piece. Just thought this was really cool. Also in the plastic case now, we got the G.I. Joe vehicle gear. Card's definitely not perfect on it. It's a nice little piece for the G.I. Joe collector. Got the box NES. Everything is bagged up nicely in there. It's missing a little bit of the styrofoam, but most of the styrofoam is actually there. Really cool to finally have one of these in a box. Got the 1970s talking G.I. Joe Adventure Team Commander with the lifelike hair. Very, very nice condition. It does have the holster kind of over his shoulder there, but it's missing the gun. And it's also missing the bottom of the box. This, this is actually the top part of the box. His hair is actually very, very nice though. There's uh, no no rub marks anywhere on it. Same with his beard. Hands are complete and in good condition. It does talk pretty well. A mint complete piece like this could sell for $300, maybe more just, just depending. This one, even like this, is probably a $150 piece, I would guess. Got a couple really good Game Boys. We have the Play It Loud green version. And then we have the Pikachu Game Boy Color, which this thing is, I think, in mint condition. I have a uh, Pokemon Blue in there right now. No bad scratch on it. The screen is really nice. Bought this one record separate from the rest of the record lot. This is a very early Australian pressing of ACDC's High Voltage. 
the uh, cover was changed later on. This is actually for the personal collection. This is just one of those records that you don't come across very often. There's a few different versions of these early pressings. Uh, some of them have kangaroos on the label, some of them do not. This is the no kangaroo version, and it can be worth close to 100, 150 bucks. So very cool on that. And then probably the thing that surprised me more than anything, this was mixed into the initial record lot. When I got everything home and started going through them, this one definitely piqued my interest. Did a little research on it. It originally came Came with a comic book journey into mystery with Thor. So if you can find one sealed with the comic book, it's a very, very expensive. Just this by itself, no comic record only in very nice shape. It's like a 200 to $250 piece and probably one of very few records that I can imagine actually doing okay at a comic con. That is all I got for you this time. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching the videos, but until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Love ya. Bye. When they hear that cha-ching, and they all look at me I guess they'll know I'm buying this crap